Hello there everyone, um, back here on YouTube, uh, I'm going to read you another uh, one of my erotic stories. Uh, this story is um, my Christmas story, it's very short, it's quite short, and it's the only Christmas one, um, story I wrote. I wrote it for a um, compilation uh, for Excitebooks of Christmas stories, um, and it wasn't chosen for the um, final cut. Uh, this is about 10 years ago, so the story is about 10 years old when I was um, living in uh, London. About 10 years ago, so yeah, the, the story is 10 years old. And um, it's not included in my erotic compilation available am on Amazon, which is called um, Swing Town and Other Stories. Uh, it's not even on there, so this is um, uh, its first outing, really. So it's called The Christmas Lingerie. Hope you enjoy. <clears throat> Dave buzzed my phone, interrupting my high street window shopping. I fully intended on he heading towards the tube station. That was until he offered something quite salacious we hadn't done for some while. Where are you? he asked me. Just near Bond Street. I'm just heading back my way. Well, I'm near you, actually. Just near Oxford Street. Ox just near Oxford Circus, I informed. What are you doing there? I thought you were working today. I was. I got out early and wanted to come and get us tickets to the show. Oh, honey, I told you I might be able to get us some free ones. It's okay. I wanted to treat us. They're great seats, too. You're very kind. I paced the doorway of the tube station as I avoided the throng of commuters exiting. Anyway, I was hoping to catch you while you were in a department store still. Why is that? I said, grinning to myself and aware of what he was thinking. Fancy having a player somewhere. I thought the changing rooms and selfages that time were quite convenient. He was referring to the time in the summer we had gone looking for a gift for his mother's birthday and ended up screwing in a particular concessions facilities. I'd left him quite innocently floating around some high-end gadget company like Bang & Olufsen or similar, dreaming about what he could possibly afford if his company made budget that year while I snuck into a dressing room with one of that season's must-haves that I knew wouldn't fit me, but I was dying to try on and prove myself wrong. What followed was an half an hour's heavy petting and hush giggles as he fed his cock into my mouth. No, I pleaded, as I walked into the body shop in order to get away from the din of the street. I can't see you. Why have not, he sulked. I explained to him that I actually just bought his present, and not just that, I had also successfully managed to kill two birds with one stone by finding something for Kelly's stocking at the same time. I've been seeing David and Kelly for a few years now. We met quite innocently on an online message board for fans of the show The X Factor. We came to blows over the merits of the eventual winner, Leona Lewis, who then went on to some degrees of success. My unflinching faith in the young artist from a very from the very early stages, impressed the couple over a long period of time, though w through which we sparked up a friendship that spilled from the magical world of the internet and, initially quite innocently, into a bar in Shepherd's Bush. As the wine flowed and they caught me looking at their wandering hands underneath their side of the corner booth, mutual smiles and glances crossed our faces and the next thing we knew, we were heading back to their flat for coffee. That first Christmas, I turned up one December evening with three red felt stockings from the pound shop in Bayswater and instructed them both to, if you'll pardon the pun, help me fill them. And fill them we do. Not with the conventionalities of tradition. I mean, this is hardly a traditional friendship, is it? No, we stay away from the usual small items of cute hilarity or momentary indulgence and instead fill them with naughty gifts we can, own, we can use on each other. With our collective loyalties to extended family, we miss the day's festivities and reruns of Morecambe and Wise and tend to meet on Christmas Eve instead. This night also means one thing, the Christmas lingerie. I love the Christmas lingerie and always look forward to any opportunity to get it out over the holidays. Admittedly, this really only consists of a lot of red and white, but we do like to make an effort and dress up. We fashioned our own a couple of years ago, when out looking for something suitable and surprisingly coming up short. So instead we ended up taking the red sets of baskets and stockings on display 
for Kelly to sew on white fuzzy cotton wool on our bosoms and stocking tops and green felt holly leaves on the bodices. We always round them off with little red heels, throw some tinsel around our necks, colour absolutely optional, and get some of those 50p Santa hats from the local supermarkets. We both jumped on the bed and cavorted for our lover, who wasn't at all immune from the dress-up. He got his own hat and a festive Rudolph thong in the deal too. That's only fair, isn't it? We like the idea of dressing him up as an elf or something, but he looks so great in a tight leather thong and, sa- and a Santa hat. Who would really want to mess with something that's already near perfect? I'm telling you, you can't, I plead into the phone. I'm not having you seeing or at, at least guessing what I've got you both. All I'm bothered about is unwrapping you anyway, you know that right? He pleaded as I wondered, as he wondered the same as I. Oh, thanks, babe. I'm still not meeting you, though. Shit, he laughs, finally thwarted. Hope to see you later, then. I had delicious thoughts on the tube ride home about the previous year. We each unwrapped our sexy gifts on the, on the bed in David and Kelly's room after a nice soak in their bath, which fits more than three. Well, at a squeeze it does, but nobody has complained yet. He got his wife a new rabbit, she's broken two this year, and me a new strap-on, which also doesn't last the year when you use it most nights of the week. Kelly bought us both new, some new sexy fiction, and I bought us all a naughty board game, up to six players, to play together. The latter did not fit in the stocking, as you, as you can imagine. Typically, David was eager to see what the board game was all about and flicked through the instruction booklet straight away, just as, as I had anticipated. Completely ignoring his wife, adjusting the buckles of the fake appendage stuck out proudly in front of me. She took me in her arms from behind. I sank back into her chest and purred. She reached round and grabbed hold of the rubber cock attached to me and stroked it up and down in her palm. Is this for me then? She giggled. If you play your cards right, I teased her. I bent down as she remained behind me, rubbing her hand into my crack. I disturbed all of the little pieces and question cards David had begun to shuffle through avidly and mounted his crossed knees to balance myself as I nuzzled and bit into his thick shoulder. Kelly pulled down my favourite black and red French knickers and rubbed at my slit with her hand as she placed her light wet marks on the small of my back, covering the ink at the base of my spine and crawled up my beds so we could both indulge our lover with gorging, open-mouthed kisses between the three of us. We giggled, whispered to each other, and pulled the festive adornment down over our hunk's eyes and pushed him back onto the bed so we can cover his lovely chest and stomach with nibbles and kisses. Mistletoe is optional at this point, of course. David grinned as he put his hands behind his back and kicked back in the delight that was the double blowjob we then treated him to. Kelly concentrated on massaging his shaved balls and licking at his arsehole, while I licked his shaft and sucked the lovely uncircumcised head, with his wife occasionally sharing the odd cock-filled slurping snog. As we both glanced at each other, I pushed a finger to my lips as I wanked him with my other and pointed Kelly towards his top half. She nodded and walked on all fours up the bed, cocking a leg over his face. I continued with this huge member, which I swear grew another inch, as she ground down onto his face with her sopping lips, wet from my fingering as she purposely laid her body towards me minutes earlier. She gripped his chest and rode her hips back and forth. She leaned back and shouted down filthy and offensive things as she dug her nails into his belly and scratched up towards her crotch in orgasm. She righted herself and ordered her husband to tongue her arsehole. She sank one of her fingers in there and freed up the tense grip of her muscles. The light, soft touch of his tongue on her entrance probably did the trick, I imagine. I love watching them make love like this, when Kelly is so removed and entranced. It's times like this I can just lay back and watch with both pride and arousal. The intimacy of their union and my welcome serenity within their bond is surely lifeless and definitely transcendent of our previous collective embrace. It's surely a sign of this that I now spend with them as many nights as I can get away with. Seeing where this was going, I reached down to my bag of tricks and hunted for the lube, with David's thick nine inches pointed up to the sky and the rival 
between my own legs, I opted for a little sword play with Kelly. Him with his cock and her reaching for his tool, playing and fighting with me. She begged me for a kiss before she sunk her cunt onto her husband's penis. She panted and gasped into my mouth as she sank further. I reached down for her clit and whispered into her ear, You want to fuck me with it? You, you want me to fuck you with this, huh? Referring to the manufactured rod. This year, though, things are different. My, my parents, who normally hold up and prevent are off skiing in Canada, so I get to visit David and Kelly and help them stuff their turkey on Christmas Day. Feliz Navidad, indeed. Okay, so that was um, a story called um, The Christmas Lingerie, and um, um, unpublished uh, and about 10 years old. Uh, so I thought I'd um, share that with you um, as we're coming up to uh, Christmas now. Uh, so thank you very much. If you like it, um, tell your friends. Thank you.